Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Tarty Flat. That's right, I've never heard of it either. Which is why I was so excited to get a food wish for this. Because while I love doing recipes I know, what I love even more is learning about dishes I had no idea existed. So I did a little research, and after learning this is made with potatoes, bacon, onions, creme fraiche, and stinky French cheese, I decided to give this a try, and it came out awesome. So I decided to show you how to put this together, and it goes a little something like this. So first up, we're going to boil some potatoes in their jackets in salted water. And of course you could peel them first, but they come out much better this way. And please don't forget that salt. Very important, especially for something like this, we don't boil the potatoes in plain water. So what we'll do is we'll bring that up to a simmer on high heat, and then back the heat down to maintain a simmer, and we will cook those potatoes until they're just tender. We don't want them too firm, but we also don't want them crumbling apart when we go to slice them. So we will test those with a knife, and like I said, we want those just cooked. And at that point, we'll remove those to a plate to cool. And the great thing about doing potatoes this way is that once those potatoes are cool enough to handle, that skin is going to very easily peel off. So what we'll do is we'll just let those sit there cooling down while we move on to the second of the three major components of this dish, the bacon and onion mixture, which starts, not surprisingly, with a whole bunch of sliced up bacon. So we'll toss that in a dry cold pan and set it over medium to medium high heat. And we want to cook that bacon until cooked, but not quite crisp. In fact, speaking of not crisp, the traditional way to do this is to start with the onions, cook those, and then add the bacon in. But to be honest, I don't understand that. I'm not sure why you'd start with the onions. Maybe one of our French fans will explain it to me. But anyway, like I said, we're going to cook that bacon on about medium to medium high heat until it just starts to think about getting crisp and most of the fat's rendered out. And once that's happened, what I like to do before adding the onions is blot out some of that excess fat. All right, one problem you're never going to have with this casserole is not enough fat. So we'll soak up the excess with some paper towels, at which point we can add a whole bunch of sliced onions. And I notice some people do like to dice them, but I think the sliced work nicely and actually require less knife work. So we'll dump in our onions and then season that up with some kosher salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, and of course the obligatory shake of cayenne. And what we want to do is cook that on medium heat until the onions are soft, sweet, and kind of golden. And that is going to take a few minutes, so don't be in a big hurry. Okay, certain things can't be rushed, like me getting ready for a big date. So keep a cooking and a stirring over about medium heat or so, until you end up with something that looks like this. And then what we'll do to finish this mixture off is dump in some dry white wine. No, not something expensive, but definitely something drinkable. And never, under any circumstances, buy or use anything labeled cooking wine. Just don't do it. It is the margarine of alcoholic beverages. So we want to use an actual real white wine. And we'll dump that in and we'll just cook it for like two minutes. Basically all we're doing is deglazing the bottom of the pan. So we'll just add that in and stir it around for a minute or two until the bottom of the pan is clean at which point we can simply turn that off and reserve until needed. So our potatoes are cooked, our onions are set, and we can move on to the third and maybe most important component, the cheese. And what we're going to want to use for this is something called reblochon. And I have good news and bad news. The good news is it is amazingly delicious. The bad news is you can't buy it in America. Because it's made with raw milk, which apparently we can't handle. But don't worry. There are some almost identical cheeses made in America you can use. And of course I'm going to give you all that info in the blog post. And yes, it does look like a brie, and the reason for that is this variety of cheese is called a washed rind, which traditionally are some of your smelliest cheeses. Smelly in a good way, of course. And to prep this, what we'll do is cut it in half, as shown, and then we'll split each half in half. And you know what? I really wish I had parchment paper under this, because that cheese is so tasty, I would have licked that off the paper. See, now I have to lick it straight off the board, which is fine. And then once our cheese has been prepped, we can move on to final assembly. So by now our potatoes should be cool enough to handle, and we'll be able to scrape that skin off very easily. And once those have been de-skinned, we'll go ahead and slice those up into, in my case, some fairly thick slices. You could probably go a little thinner. And once those potatoes are cut, we're going to place about 60% of them in the bottom of a buttered casserole dish. And in case you're wondering, I believe this is a two and a half quart dish. But anyway, we're going to lay in just over half our potatoes into the bottom. And yes, you can overlap them a little, just try to get them as even as you can. And once that was set, I decided to give them a little sprinkling of salt. And I based that decision on tasting a piece of the potato and deciding I wanted a little more seasoning. And then once that first layer of potatoes is done, we'll dump over the entire contents of our bacon onion wine mixture. And we will spread that over as evenly as possible. And by the way, raise your hand if you were going to spread that unevenly, had I not said that. 
and I see no hands. So that's kind of obvious. And then what we'll do is arrange the rest of the potatoes over the top in hopefully some kind of overlapping, aesthetically pleasing way. And yes, I do see that little tiny piece of skin. Just ignore that. And then once that's set, we will French this up even more by spreading over some creme fraiche. And I believe technically this is an optional ingredient, but you know me and my creme fraiche fetish. So for me, definitely not optional. And once we have that spread over, we will place down our cheese. Definitely rind side up. And yes, I'm fully aware of how insane this looks, but this all works out, trust me. And by the way, if your cheese came with some paper attached, we're gonna to wanna to peel that off. Not even the French who literally will eat anything will eat paper. Although if you had to eat paper, this really is not a bad way to go. But anyway, I peeled that off. And then what we're definitely gonna to wanna to do before we bake this is transfer it to some kind of foil lined pan. Because if there's one thing you don't want burning onto the bottom of your oven, it's really smelly French cheese. So we will place that on a pan, at which point we can transfer that into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes or until it's nicely browned and your potatoes are perfectly tender. And when it's done, it should look something like this. That has to be one of the most interesting, most stunning, and most gorgeous things that's come out of my oven in since I can remember. I just find the appearance beyond fascinating. And what's happened here is that creamy cheese is kind of melted and combined with that creme fraiche to form one of the most delicious cheese sauces I've ever had. And then before we serve this, we do want to let it cool down for about 10 or 15 minutes, which I'm going to pretend I did, before scooping out and plating up a nice big portion. And yes, you are going to include that gorgeous rind when you serve. So we'll serve that up. But before we get to my plating suggestions, I really do need to grab a fork and give this a taste. And personally, I'm happy just eating potatoes, bacon, and onions. But when you add that creme fraiche and Reblochon style cheese, it takes this into almost impossible to explain how delicious it is territory. I mean, that is just borderline otherworldly. And because it is so rich and decadent, I don't recommend using this as a side dish. I think you should serve this as a main course with a salad, in my case, watercress. And for me, that creates a meal fit for a king, French or otherwise. And by the way, let this be a lesson to you. I never did test mine with a knife because I just assumed they were perfectly tender. But you know what? They actually could have used another five or 10 minutes. I mean, they were fine, but you really do want them nice and tender. And of course, I know you're all wondering, sure, that cheese rind looks great, but is it edible? Chef John, will that poison me if I eat it? No, not at all. It's fine to eat. So let me show you, because I sense you are skeptical. So let me take a nice big piece of what I'm really hoping is a perfectly safe thing to eat. And you know what? It really doesn't taste like anything. So sure, you could eat around that if you want, but there's really no reason to. But anyway, that's it. Tartiflette considered by people who consider such things, maybe the greatest potato casserole of all time. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.